Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball Channel. This is Eric, and today we are talking about the Hall of Fame because it is Hall of Fame Election Day. It is here, and is anyone getting in? I've talked about who I want to get in. I gave you all my ballot. I had 10 guys. My ballot was full. We brought in Wardy and Jim from Ball Cap Sports, and we did a full roundtable analysis, not just on my channel, but on Wardy NYM and over on Ball Cap Sports. Check those channels out. I'll link all that in the description. You can go check that out. We had a deep, deep analysis discussion over several Hall of Fame candidates, even guys that are not on the ballot anymore. There were a lot of options who I feel are definite, absolute Hall of Famers, and I think it is an absolute pathetic shame that the voters will not vote for these guys. And, and it's not just guys with controversies. There's guys like Andrew Jones, controversy, fr controversy free. So what is going on there? What is going on with all these other guys that can't get any support? It's pretty freaking ridiculous. I'm not saying they all need to get in, but damn, there's a lot of Hall of Famers, in my opinion, who cannot sniff the Hall of Fame. But the one guy who's making the most traction right now has been Kurt Schilling. And is Kurt Schilling going to get in this year? I'm thinking that he has a chance. He has a chance. So what if he has a political opinion? And so what if it sounds extreme sometimes? I know it does. I don't agree with all his tweets. I read his tweets and I cringe like, oh, God, that's pretty terrible right there. Uh, but guess what? I'm not going to hold him out of the Hall of Fame for it, okay? But will voters? Absolutely, freaking lutely they will. They just will. You know there's some far-left voters or even not that far-left. Just, you know, there's voters who are going to simply not keep him in and going to think this guy's a piece of garbage. He doesn't deserve to, my vote. He doesn't deserve to be in. He doesn't deserve any honor whatsoever. This guy's a piece of crap. It's an absolute just worthless human being, and I ain't going to vote for no Kurt Schilling. No. Now, if they're asked, they can just say, well, I just thought his playing career wasn't quite good enough. But in their mind, they're like, yeah, I hate this guy. Kurt Schilling should be in. So let's take a look at where we're at right now. As of now, it is about 6.50 a.m. on the West Coast, 9.50 a.m. on the East Coast, about 8.50 Central Time. So let's take a look at where we're at now. Right now, these uh, public ballots, 181 public ballots, percentage a little less than 50. Typically, uh, the numbers go down towards the end, it seems to be, but we'll take a look at where we're at. Bobby Abreu right now is not going to make it. Eliminated. Barry Bonds is doing decent. He's hovering around 75. Right now, 73.3, though. And like I said, usually this will go down. And he needs 76.6 on re remaining ballots. Not impossible. Not impossible. I have some. I have hope every year for Barry Bonds. Every year I have hope. That is pretty freaking good and pretty uh, hopeful for next year. Maybe a lot of voters also are waiting for that last year on the ballot. They're going to hold it out to that last year on the ballot. Uh, Mark Burley is not going to make it. A.J. Burnett not have no chance. Uh, Roger Clemens, same story. Just around 73. He's actually a little less than Bond, so he needs a little more on the remaining ballots. I don't know why voters would vote for one or the other, but they always do. You'd think they'd be pretty close. They are pretty close, but you'd think they'd be pretty much even. But obviously somebody... Somebody's voting for one and not the other. But hey, anyway, both of them are very close and both of them have a chance. I don't think they're going to make it though because like I said, this number usually goes down. Todd Helton's doing terrible. He hasn't been eliminated, but he needs 99% of votes on the remaining. And he has no chance. Todd Helton is not going to make it. I got him on my ballot. Tim Hudson uh, had a better career than I thought and I thought he would get more Hall of Fame support. He may get eliminated and off the ballot. And I think that's a shame. I was hoping he would stay on the ballot, but... Looks like it's not going to happen. But Tim Hudson had a really awesome career. Torrey Hunter did as well. Torrey Hunter and Tim Hudson, both guys, had great careers. Andrew Jones, crap support. Jeff Kent, crap support. Andy Pettit, crap support. All three of these guys were on my ballot. They have no chance. Manny Ramirez, uh, he was not on my ballot. I would, I did consider him, and I will consider him in future years, but uh, no, uh, he's not going to make it. Scott Rollins doing well, 61, but not well enough. But here we have Kurt Schilling, and, and you can see 74.9% as of now. He needs 75.1% on remaining ballots. Now, those remaining ballots have been submitted, to my understanding. They just haven't been counted yet, or they haven't been made public yet. Let's say it that way. They haven't been made public yet. It's not like we're waiting on, if we were waiting on 25% of uh, votes to, to be voted on, then I would say he has no chance because they're going to hold him out based on the recent tweet. But if they've already been submitted before that tweet, I guess he has a chance, but like I said, this number usually goes down. I think he has a chance, though. I think Kurt Schilling has a chance, 
And I'll get to my prediction shortly here. Uh, obviously, Gary Sheffield is 100% of remaining votes. He's effectively eliminated. Sosa, Nick Swisher, Shane Victorino, Omar Vizquel. I'll we'll talk about him in a second. All those guys have been eliminated. Omar Vizquel, freaking pathetic, 40%. Yeah, yet, uh, yet, Ozzy Smith is a first-time no-brainer Hall of Famer. These voters, man, these voters, they just look at the name. They just look at the name and see who it is and, and then just vote based on that. They don't have any critical thinking. Uh, they don't have any, they don't do any, um, what's it called, any research. And I'm not speaking for every single one of them, but in general, they obviously don't do much research. They just see a name and say, oh, Marvis Gal, no, that's not, no. They see, oh, Ozzy Smith, he does the flip, 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 they flops, and we'll vote for him. Uh, Billy Wagner, uh, 46%, and Billy Wagner has a 100% Hall of Fame career if we are to look at the other closers in. That's important. That has been a precedent that has been set that closers who were absolutely dominant throughout their careers get in. Uh, the only reason to hold him out is postseason. I can see some voters doing that, but this is pathetic that he can't even get to 50, much less 60, 70 percent. Pathetic. Pathetic. And right now we can see some guys didn't vote for Bonds here. This guy did not vote for Bonds. Jamie Aaron, Chris Assenheimer. Okay. Asenheimer. I'm not even trying to make fun of him. I'm really trying to pronounce his name. Asenheimer. That's what it says. I, I assume that's his name. Chris Asenheimer. So Chris Asenheimer um, did not vote for Bonds. Did not vote for Clements because he feels that they won't vote for the steroid guys. He better not have voted. He voted for Tory Hunter, Andrew Jones, Scott Rowland. He did vote for Kurt Schilling and Omar Vizquel. So give him credit there. But he's not voting for Bonds and Clements. This guy here, Mike Barra, Mike Berardino. I, I I knew a guy named Bernardino, Bernardino, but there was an N right here. This is Berardino, Berardino. Anyway, Mike Berardino, um, he voted for Abreu, but not Bonds and not Clemens. But he did vote for Helton, Jones, Roland, Schilling, and Wagner, but not Vizquel. It's just interesting, interesting. Everyone's opinions are different. I'm not trying to come after these guys. This ballot, again, this ballot is decent, but no Bonds, no Clemens. We know exactly why. I'm wondering if anyone voted, not, did not vote for Bonds, but voted for, like, Manny Ramirez. Wait a minute here. Look at this one. Mark Fowler. Mark Fowler did not vote for Bonds, did not vote for Clemens, but he did vote for Gary Sheffield. Let me repeat. Mark Fowler did not vote for Bonds, did not vote for Clemens, but he did vote for Gary Sheffield. Gary Sheffield was someone who trained with Barry Bonds, and there is steroid connections there. Maybe there's no fail test, but there's no fail test for Bonds too. So that's an interesting one right there. Did not vote for Bonds, did not vote for Clemens, but voted for Sheffield. Did not vote for Ramirez, I'll give him that, but he voted for Sheffield. Did he vote for Sosa? Where the f*** is Sosa? No, no Sosa. Steve Gardner votes for Sosa, Bonds, Clemens. Matt Gell votes for... So you got guys who are steroid voters and guys who are not steroid voters. And one guy votes, votes for... Vote, votes for... Vote, 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 votes for Sheffield, but not Bonds. And here's another one. Kevin Kernan. No Bonds, no Clemens, but he's got Sheffield. Isn't that interesting? There's guys voting for Sheffield. And maybe I need to research Sheffield, uh, but I'm pretty sure there's pretty tight steroid connections there. Pretty sure Sheffield was on the juice. But let me know. Maybe I need to do more research on Sheffield. Maybe, uh, so I don't want to judge these guys, but I think that's pretty hypocritical. I think if you're going to vote for guys connected to steroids, then Bonds and Clemens, you got to put them in 100%. But you will notice a pattern here. As I was talking about earlier, pretty much everyone who voted for Bonds did vote for Clemens. You can see all the X's here when there's an empty X. For Bonds, there's also an empty X for Cle for Clemens. So that is going to be something that we're going to notice here. And that is not surprising. You know, like LaTroy Hawkins got a vote. Is it on here? Yeah, LaTroy Hawkins got a vote. Who voted for LaTroy Hawkins? And all due respect to LaTroy Hawkins. I think I thought I saw it. There it is. No? Yes. Bob Nightingale. The famous Bob Nightingale of all people. It had to be Bob Nightingale. Bob Nightingale, who still never apologized to Dickerson after calling him out for uh, and saying stuff that wasn't true. Bob Nightingale is a sensationalist, and he wants to be first, and he wants to put out stuff, and he'll make up stuff. So just know that about Bob Nightingale. 
Uh, Bob Nightingale, but he did vote for Bonds and Clemens, so I'll give him credit where credit is due. So he did vote for Bonds and Clemens, but he votes for Latroy Hawkins, the one guy to vote for Latroy Hawkins. He said, the reason I voted for the pitcher with a 75-94 and record. Okay, well, he just puts the stats. We don't have to look up his stats. They're right here. 4.31 one year, 127 say, uh, seven saves and a 17.8 war. And blah, blah, blah. It was the year Reggie Jackson was elected to the Hall of Fame, the only one to make it, although five others on the ballot would later join him. When the ballot was revealed, there was five players who didn't receive a single vote. One broke my heart. Okay, so you're voting for a guy just so he'll get a single vote. That's what you're saying. So he was sickened to see that nobody voted. Yeah, that's sad that nobody voted for Hal McRae. Um, Six-time 300 hitter, three-time All-Star, two uh, top five MVP finishes. Yeah, he should have got a vote or two uh, or, or ten or something. He should have got some votes. But, hey, now that you, now, now it's Latroy Hawkins, um, look, all due respect, he had a long career, a super long career, and I do appreciate longevity, but... If you're going to say here, I wanted to make sure Hawkins can always say he received at least one vote for his contribution to the game. Well, now that you wrote this article, yeah, he can say that, but he knows in his mind the only reason he got one vote is because somebody gave him a pity vote who didn't really think he was in, but he gave him that one vote, and now you just came out and said why. So now that vote is kind of meaningless. So good job there, Bob Nightingale. You could have just voted for him and not said anything about it, and then he could have felt maybe he got an actual vote. But now you're coming out and just saying... Um, that you you voted for him only so that he could get one vote and he can always say he received one vote not because he really you really think he's a hall of famer the absolute uh, uh, there's, there's no reason that people be offended Hawkins didn't take anyone's spot I picked eight players and had two vacant spots on my ballot whoa 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 if you don't think Andrew Jones is in in that case Bob I don't know what's wrong with you I don't know what's wrong with a whole bunch of voters actually so I guess I can't talk because Andrew Jones has 38.9% and Scott Rowland has 62.2%. I think that Andrew Jones is more of a Hall of Famer than Scott Rowland, even though they're both on my ballot. What's up with Andrew Jones, man? What's up with this, man? This is terrible. So that's pretty much where we're at right now, and I just thought that was interesting. A lot of guys' votes are all over the place. You know, I mean, we can always criticize. I really don't feel, I really feel like they're, they don't do their due research or that, that, and I'm not saying all the, of course the voting is going to be different. The percentages are going to be different, but when you got a guy like Andrew Jones is around 40%, something's wrong. Um, but for my predictions, guys, I, I honestly, I don't think anyone's getting in this year. I think they're going to take advantage of the fact that we didn't have a ceremony last year and they don't want to have an empty ceremony. Guess what? We won't because Derek Jeter and Larry Walker and anyone else who is, was going to get inducted last year is going to get inducted in this upcoming, uh, this year, or, you know, uh, if we have the ceremony. So it's not going to be a vacant, empty ceremony. So I think the voters are like, hey, I don't need to vote for these guys anyway. I don't, I don't, I don't care if it's an empty ballot. And it's a bunch of bull. And I find, you know, and, and, and maybe I'm wrong about Nightingale here. Maybe I came a little too hard. Maybe he had those two extra vacant spots. And so he wanted those guys to get votes and it's fine. But I really feel like if you're not voting for Andrew Jones, something, I, I, I really don't understand that. You, you can't convince me that he's not a Hall of Famer, but that's just me. That's my opinion. So, guys, hope you all have a fantastic day. I predict there will be zero inductees in the 2021 election tonight and i'll make a video on the results either tonight or tomorrow so you guys have a fantastic day maybe i'll go live and cover it i can't promise you maybe i'll go live and cover it you guys have a great day hit the subscribe button hit the thumbs up button look for new videos coming very soon to the hum baby baseball channel check out humbabybaseball.com you can check me out on twitter i still got a twitter account hum baby bb we're gonna talk to you next time see ya when the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are down, it's bye-bye, baby. History's in the making at Oracle Park.